everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. Polar Bear T-Rex Scientists have discovered a new kind of tyrannosaur in the Arctic. They are calling it the Polar Bear Tyrannosaur. And this new creature was a smaller relative of the more famous Tyrannosaurus Rex. In prehistoric times, it lived as far north as the Arctic Circle. The new Tyrannosaur has been given the scientific name Nanuxaurus hoglundi, which incorporates the Inupiat word for polar bear. The fossil was actually discovered over a decade ago in 2006, near North Slope in Alaska. Researchers came across a full skull and some jaw fragments, which was pretty exciting, since finding a whole head is rare, and you can tell a lot about dinosaurs from their skull. They were able to determine that the skull was only about 25 inches, compared to the whopping 60 inches of the more famous T-Rex in the south. Scientists also believe the Arctic Tyrannosaur was only about 22 feet long, while the T-Rex grew to be over 39 feet long. The truly remarkable part of the discovery is knowing that there were different Tyrannosaurs living in the Arctic. The Arctic Circle may be an inhospitable wasteland today, but 70 million years ago, its weather was more similar to that of Seattle. The Tyrannosaur would have been right at home in a warmer environment with lots of rain, plants, and creatures to eat. As for why the Arctic Tyrannosaur was so small, Anthony Fiorillo from the Perro Museum of Nature and Science says there must have been something in the environment which caused the Tyrannosaur to evolve a smaller body. Whatever was happening in the Arctic before the asteroid impact killed the dinos, it must have been better for the animal to be smaller. Number 9. Pterosaur Mystery an international team of paleontologists has recently discovered new information on pterosaurs, the famous flying reptiles that lived alongside dinosaurs over 200 million years ago. It turns out that pterosaurs were able to change the color of their feathers at will by using melanin pigments. The study was done by researchers with the University College Cork, the Royal Belgian Institute of Natural Sciences, and several other organizations. The scientists looked at the fossilized head crest of a pterosaur that lived 115 million years ago, specifically the Tupendactylus imperator from northeastern Brazil. This species of pterosaur is famous because it had a large and strange-looking head crest. But up until now, scientists have debated whether the animal had feathers or not. Some thought the pterosaur was like a slimy flying lizard. Others thought it had feathers like a bird. With these new fossils, the researchers found evidence of both wiry, hair-like feathers and fluffy feathers. We now know pterosaurs definitely had feathers. There's no more debating it. Phew, we can finally put that to rest. But the scientists took their research a step further. They used a high-powered electron microscope to look at preserved melanosomes, or the small granules of pigment melanin. They found different feathers had different colors. What this means is that the pterosaur had the genetic ability to control the colors of its feathers. These prehistoric flying reptiles didn't look like lizard bats as they are portrayed in so many dinosaur movies. Instead, they were extremely colorful and covered in huge, beautiful feathers. Number 8. Fossilized Heart In Australia, researchers have discovered what they believe to be the oldest heart ever found. It's 380 million years old, and it once belonged to a prehistoric fish. John Long from Flinders University says it's the oldest three-dimensionally preserved heart from a vertebrate that's ever been seen by scientists. He called the discovery both jaw-dropping and mind-boggling. It's the first time in history that scientists have had the chance to investigate the soft organ of an animal that's so old. The thing about soft tissue is that it's almost never preserved in fossils. Soft tissue like organs, eyeballs, and skin are either eaten by creatures or they decay. This leaves bones, shells, and teeth. But every now and again, something extraordinary happens. A piece of a stomach, an intestine, maybe a liver. Something soft gets left behind and fossilized. That's exactly what happened with this fish, an extinct armored fish and perhaps one of the first creatures in the sea to have jaws. It's known as a placoderm, and it existed on our planet from 416 million to 359 million years ago. It was discovered in the Gogo Formation of Western Australia. And here's where the discovery truly gets amazing. 
After the researchers used neutron beams and synchrotron x-rays to look inside the fossil at its heart, they saw similarities to modern sharks and also humans. For the first time in history, scientists have confirmed that the organs of a fish nearly half a billion years ago were not that different from human organs today. Isn't life amazing? Number 7. Dinosaur Footprints in the southwest of China, a surprise diner at a restaurant spotted something unusual in the venue's outdoor courtyard. While they were waiting for their food, they recognized the shape of footprints from a pair of prehistoric beasts that lived hundreds of millions of years ago. The footprints were sitting outside the restaurant near some stone pits, sheltered within the courtyard's garden. What may have looked to ordinary people like large divots were in reality the fossilized footprints of two sauropods. The discovery was such a big deal that scientists from the China University of Geosciences took a trip to the restaurant as part of an investigation. Li Dashing, a paleontologist from the university, confirmed the prints using a 3D scanner. And while we don't know which specific species of sauropod that the dinosaurs belonged to, we know they were huge. The individuals who left these footprints were at least 26 feet long. And yet that wasn't even very big, considering sauropods were the biggest animals that ever walked the earth. Some species could grow to over 112 feet long and were so heavy the ground would have trembled as they drew near. And now for number 6, but first I want to give a big shout out to Herbert Correa and Thetan Ramruin. We are so happy to be a part of your night or your day. If you are new to the channel, welcome and be sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos like these. Number 6. New Armored Dinosaur Researchers recently discovered the remains of a previously unknown species of armored dinosaur in Argentina. It's the first of its kind ever identified in South America, and so it's made a pretty big splash in the world of paleontology. Scientists have named it Jacopil Caniucura, and it was a very strange-looking creature. The dinosaur was bipedal, meaning it walked on two legs. It had a short beak like a bird. It also had rows of hard bony discs from the base of its skull down to its tail like a natural suit of armor. It would have been an incredibly difficult creature to kill, harder to bite through than the thick leather hide of a crocodile. But the craziest part is that it ran around on two legs. It was the same kind of dinosaur as the Stegosaurus and Ankylosaurus, belonging to a group of creatures known as Thyreophora yet it could run around on two legs like a raptor. The mysterious armored dinosaur lived very briefly, probably between 97 and 94 million years ago. It went extinct long before the asteroid ever hit, and that's something that's really boggled scientists. No one is sure why so many older types of Thyreophorans went extinct in the Middle Jurassic, seemingly for no reason. Although to be honest, it may have had something to do with its size. The jackapill was only about 5 feet long and 15 pounds, the size of a house cat. In a world of giants and predators, it didn't have the best chances of survival. Number 5. Jurassic Barf 150 million years ago in what is now Utah, an animal threw up its lunch. It consumed a small frog, then had a salamander for dessert. But something didn't sit right in its stomach, and it barfed up its food. A team of paleontologists has just discovered that pile of fossilized Jurassic puke and they've already unraveled the mystery of what happened here all those years ago. Researchers found frog bones from a tadpole along with bits of salamander. Scientists with Utah State Parks say that based on the mix of animals, the chemistry of the bones, and the general presentation, we're dealing with prehistoric puke. But whose puke was it? Surprisingly, it didn't come from a dinosaur. Even though this was a time when the Stegosaurus and the Brachiosaurus roamed across Utah, the barf was most likely from a fish. The place where the fossil was discovered used to be a pond in prehistoric times, home to amphibians and other marine creatures. The vomit likely came from a bowfin fish trying to distract a predator. The reason scientists were so easily able to figure this out is simple. All three animals involved are still around today. We still have fish, we still have frogs, and we still have salamanders. We know that sometimes if a fish is in danger of being eaten by something bigger, 
it will make itself regurgitate its last meal as a way to escape. Number 4. Insects After the Extinction The Cretaceous period came to an end 66 million years ago with a bang. An asteroid from outer space crashed into Mexico, leading to a global catastrophe the likes of which has never been seen again. The impact triggered a mass extinction, and pretty much everything died. The Great Extinction got rid of the dinosaurs and allowed mammals to prosper, which was what led to the evolution of the human species. All in all, it wasn't a bad thing for us. But mammals weren't the only things that bounced back after the asteroid. A recent study has shown that insects were some of the first creatures to make a comeback. Researchers took fossils from Patagonia of plants that had been damaged by insects after the extinction event. Some of the fossilized leaves they found were only 62 million years old, only about 3 million years after the total extinction of most life. The scientists were able to conclude their study with some fascinating new information. Yes, there was a massive extinction of insects in the years following the impact. However, insects were back to their normal levels in Patagonia within 4 million years. On the other hand, similar progress wasn't made in the western US for 9 million years. It looks like the farther from the impact site, the more quickly life recovered. Number 3. The World's Oldest Mammal Thanks to some highly motivated scientists and a very old set of teeth, the world's oldest known mammal has just been identified. It's flipping the world of paleontology on its head. This new mammal lived millions of years earlier than scientists had ever imagined, pushing back the origin date for mammals. The creature is called the Brazilodon, and it was extremely small. It looked like a shrew and only stood about 8 inches from the tip of its tail to the top of its skull. It lived 225 million years ago, evolving at the exact same time some of the oldest dinosaurs came into existence. Martha Richter, the senior author of the new research paper, says the Brasilodon will hopefully contribute to our understanding of the evolution of modern mammals. Prior to this discovery, the oldest mammal ever found was the Morgan Eucodon, a small rodent-like critter that lived 205 million years ago. That makes the Brasilodon 20 million years older, and the oldest yet. But what makes this creature a mammal? It all boiled down to the teeth. Scientists identified its two sets of successive teeth, first the baby teeth that developed before birth, and then the adult teeth that came in later. This is a distinct characteristic of mammals, very much unlike reptiles who can replace their teeth multiple times throughout their lives. Number 2. The Tubingosaurus German paleontologists recently re-examined the bones of a dinosaur found in 1922. The dinosaur had originally been stored at the University of Tübingen and improperly classified. It was thought to be a Platosaurus, when in reality it was an unknown species. Approximately 100 years later, scientists finally revisited the fossil and identified it as a new species of dinosaur. Not only that, but the creature is also its own new genus, a totally unique animal that lived between 211 and 203 million years ago in southwest Germany. The Germans have given this dinosaur an extraordinarily long name. It's called the Tubingosaurus meyerfritzsaurum, and it looked kind of like a long-necked sauropod. Except it wasn't a sauropod, it was a totally separate and distinctive thing. Sure, its closest relative was probably the Diplodocus or the Brachiosaurus, but it wasn't a sauropod. Number 1. Sauropod Pads Speaking of sauropods, scientists have made a really fascinating discovery involving their feet. Australian scientists, for a first in history, have discovered biomechanical evidence that these sauropods, animals like the Brontosaurus and the Titanosaurus, had soft foot pads. It's an idea that's been around for a really long time. Just like how elephants have soft pads on their feet to help cushion their heavy steps, so too did sauropods. The idea is that any animal as preposterously heavy as a sauropod would need some kind of mechanism to support their weight, otherwise their bones could break or buckle and they wouldn't be able to walk. Scientists in Australia digitally reconstructed several sauropods to learn how they moved around effectively. Andreas Janel from the University of Queensland 
says the team found evidence that sauropods had pads on their back feet. These pads would have played a pivotal role in reducing the pressure of locomotion, while also decreasing bone stress. Andreas went on to say that it's hard to imagine that any creature so giant and so heavy could have supported their own weight, never mind moving around. Sauropods were the longest animals that ever lived. They had extremely long tails, thick hind legs like huge redwood trunks, and club-like feet. Each foot was equipped with five toes to help weight distribution. And yet despite being gigantic monsters, sauropods could move relatively fast. Scientists have estimated that Argentinosaurus, considered one of the biggest species of them all, could move at a blinding speed of about five miles per hour. Thanks for watching. What's your favorite prehistoric beast? Let us all know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye.